Part two of our Breeders' Cup Saturday podcast. Tom Leach and Jim Goodman as we take a look at the final four Breeders' Cup races on the Saturday card at Churchill Downs. And that includes a late pick four that uh, we will uh, make a ticket for as well. So, Jim, start us out with the Breeders' Cup mile. A bunch of Euros in here this year. Yeah, nothing like starting off with, with one that you don't really know much about. Uh, I am definitely leaning toward the Euros here. I'm, I'm using uh, all Euros except one. Uh, American horse that I think has a shot. That American horse, uh, actually, I'm using two American horses. I'm using three Euros. The Euros I'm, I'm using are one master, the one horse. Um, I'm using uh, the two next shares off that Shadwell turf mile win. It's just a, I can't ignore that big jump up for next shares coming off that Kentucky Downs win and, and winning so easily at Keeneland. I'm going to use Poly Dream, the four from Europe. I'm uh, going to use the five Oscar performance and the, the seven expert eye from Europe. And I'll, I'll be the first to tell you that all I can look at at the, at the European Forum is um, is what they they appear to have raced against over there and, and gauge that against what our horses have run against. I've got to include those three Euros, Euros but uh, the, two Euro, the two American horses, uh, Next Shares and Oscar Performance, if they jump up, they can, they can run with them. But it wouldn't surprise me if those Euros ran one, two, three. Um, so I'm going to go in the pick four with one, two, four, five, seven. Uh, Polly Dream, the four horse who won. Uh, who, uh, I'm sorry, one master, the one who won on uh, uh, Art Day in, at Longchamp over Polly Dream, the four, is my pick here. Uh, horse seems to be coming in very good form at a 119 time form last time out, and I uh, can't believe at 12 to one morning line you're going to get anything close to that. But uh, this is one where you got to spread in the pick four. I can't imagine having a strong opinion here. I'm going to take Expert Eye, Detori Rides, which was the first thing that drew my eye to this one. Sir Michael Stout, who has a great record at the Breeders' Cup, although usually more in the turf than in the mile. But he picks his spots well when he comes over. And this horse getting first Lasix, and then also out of a Densilly mare. Densilly should have won the Breeders' Cup in 2000 at Churchill Downs. So um, the, uh, on the on the dam side, the, uh, the sire of uh, the dam sire here, Dan Silly uh, really liked the the turf course at uh, at Churchill, so I think Expert Eye will as well. So he's my win pick, but I'm going to use Poly Dream, uh, One Master. I've done a little reading on Euros, and uh, he supposedly really likes the soft turf, so that's a big plus for him. Um, the other Michael Stout, if, if I'm going to go that angle, I'm going to take both of them. That's the 14, even though it's a horrible post. Uh, mustachery, that's how it's pronounced. And then I'm going to use Lightning Spear as well on my pick four ticket. So I'm all Euros in there. Uh, I had next shares written down, and and so I uh, I may end up throwing him in on a ticket. He's the American that I like the best as well, uh, the one that you mentioned. thought that was a really impressive run at Keeneland in the Shadwell Turf Mile. Let's go to the ninth race. It's the Distaff at a mile and an eighth. I'm kind of going in thinking I like the older horses over the three-year-olds in here. So uh, that's where I am headed. I'm going to Abel Tasman. I'm going to forgive the last race and look at the previous race. And if she runs back to that 105 buyer, I think she, that stands out in here. This is her best distance. She's a half length away from being four for four at nine furlongs. And then look at the uh, the work on the 19th of October, seven furlongs. That's a little atypical for Baffert thinking maybe that she just didn't get enough out of that last race and they wanted to give her a little more stamina. And then she followed it up with a 47-1 and one half mile. Uh, I like the work pattern. This horse ran uh, a clunker on Derby weekend and came back and looked great the next time out. So I'm going Abel Tasman here. I think Champagne Problems has got a big shot for a price with Calvin Burrell. It's only breeder, his only Breeders' Cup mount. Had a little trouble uh, getting a clear path in the spinster, which has historically been a key prep for this race. Uh, Champagne Problems seems to have come back after a little break in the spring as uh, in an all-time best form. This is her last start. I think she's in great form. She hadn't had luck, luck beating Blue Prize, but I think she'll get a better pace set up here with a bigger field. Got to use Blue Prize, too. Uh, I'm going to use La Force as well for a little bit of a long shot play. The other Baffert, Valdori. Uh, made a big improvement first time with blinkers. So I thought that was noteworthy. And um, I just don't think she's as good as Abel Tasman. But I'm going to use use her in my ticket as well. But it's Abel Tasman for me and the distaff. How about you? Well, I agree with 50% of your statements. You said you <laughs> like the older horses over the three-year-olds. And I, I do, except for the best three-year-old, Monomoy Girl. And I, 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 there's no way I'm tossing her here. And, and I almost singled her. I think she's that good. 
she's good at Churchill. She got taken down, <coughs> excuse me, at Parks in a very questionable disqualification, or she'd be nine for ten, um, and a neck away from ten for ten. She lost to Golden right here at Churchill uh, as a two-year-old. So Montemoy Girl is my pick here. I'm also going to use Abel Tasman, who I think is the best of the older horses. Uh, she's shown an affinity for Churchill as well. So I'm going to take the two Oaks winners, uh, the 2017 edition and the 2018 edition, and take a stand with those two here. I'm going to spread later on the classic, so I'm going to just use those two horses here, and I think the winner comes from one of those two. Let's go to the turf, the mile-and-a-half turf. I think this is uh, probably all Euros for me. Uh, how do you see it? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to split them. I'm going to take the best Euro which is enable. Uh, I think the, the female coming out of the arc, uh, she's won the arc twice. She only raced twice this year. So, so even though the arc was only a month ago, I think she ought to be fresh. And those time form ratings are, are outstanding. They stand over everything in this field from the Euro standpoint. And I'm going to use her and along with what I think is the best American in here. And that's channel maker, channel maker off the soft turf, uh, at Belmont, the turf classic invitational on 29th September, uh, one off like a real good thing. Ran a 108 buyer, the best of her lifetime, best of his lifetime, and uh, basically put away a good field, including Sadler's Joy and Robert Bruce, didn't give him a chance to come from behind. So I think there's a chance that Channel Maker controls this pace on the soft turf, and she's certainly shown an affinity for it uh, in New York. So he's he's the best shot the Americans have. Enable is the best shot the Europeans have, and I'm going to take another stand here with only two horses. The way I look at Breeders' Cup is I could sit here and talk about eight of them, but I'm not going to play eight of them. I've got a limited budget, and it's not fair for me to sit here and try to give you 12 horses that can win the race. So I'm going to tell you the two horses that I think have the best chance, and that's Enable at, and then Channel Maker at a price. So I'm going to go 2-3 in this race. I like three Euros in here. and I'm going to pick Magical for the win. I, uh, I bet her uh, a couple of weeks ago in that run on Champions Day over at Ascot. She looked really good. Um Seems to be getting good at the right time. At, at the, maybe has found her best distance. Um, I'm going to try to beat Enable uh, just because the Ark winners never won here. I mean, the Ark is if you win the Ark, you're usually really pointed for it, and I think sometimes that means that they're uh, not as as good next time back, uh, coming back a few weeks later. So I'm going to try to beat Enable, but she certainly has looked awfully good this week. So she's got to be on my ticket, and then. Walt Geist, Andre Fobb won this race last year. He's been so good over the years in the Breeders' Cup, so I'm going to use that one too. Um, I might throw one more in there, and it would be an American Saddler's Joy. This horse has just always been around it in some big races, occasionally wins, and um, you know I'd, I'd hate to see him beat me at a massive price in this spot. So uh, I might throw that one on the ticket if once I structure it and if it can uh, afford it. I think I'm going to throw that one in there as well just to have a big price shot, but... Um, I think a Euro is going to win this. Brings us to the Classic, and I will tell you I have no strong opinion in here. Where did you go? I don't have a strong opinion either. I think you can make a case for a lot of them. And one of my first tickets had a single with taking all here, and I, and I changed my mind, And I'm, but I'm taking probably half the field. And, I, you know, Accelerate is probably the best horse in here. I do not like anything about the 14 hole. Um, he, he ran in the awesome again at Santa Anita. Maybe he didn't have to run that hard. He beat West Coast, and uh, but only a, a six-horse field got 100 buyers, so he took a step back from Pacific Classic. Uh, if he runs back Pacific Classic, everybody else is running for second, the 115 buyer. Uh, not sure he'll do that from a 14 hole. Not sure he'll do that on what could be a slightly off track. But I'm going to use him, obviously. I like Thunder Snow in here some. Uh, the Jockey Club Gold Cup, he almost beat Discreet Lover, who was a huge price and, and just got nose out the wire uh, i'm going to use catholic boy uh, probably one of the it horses uh off that 104 buyer in the travers <clears throat> proved that he could uh win on the dirt as well as a turf very versatile horse and just wants to win he beat uh analyzed it twice on the turf and showed a lot of guts in the travers was very impressive performance mckenzie off the off the uh, pennsylvania derby win uh, very lightly raced. Obviously, Baffert thought he was as good as Justify at one time. So if he's maintained his form, he's going to be right there. We use the West Coast. If he gets back to his last year's form, he's going to be right there. And he used the Awesome again as a tune-up after coming back from Dubai and having some setbacks. Um, Yoshida, who won the Woodward first time on dirt, I think he's got a shot. Um, that's probably as, as deep as I can go with my budget. 
Uh, I'm going to use seven out of the 14, and I've got a rule that if I use more than half, I've got to go all. So I'm going to use one, three, six, seven, ten, eleven, fourteen. 10, 11, 14. Um, if you made me pick a win bet, I would think t- Thunder Snow at 12 to 1 is a better bet than uh, Accelerate at 5 to 2. But uh, that's probably my two top picks. We do a weekly video for Keeneland Select where I do a, a pick of the week on a, on a particular race, and it's the classic. And I will tell you, I, I at an index card that I wrote my pick on, and I went through four index cards. I changed my mind four <laughs> times. I ended up on Pavel, the eight, for Doug O'Neill. Whoa. This horse, 20-1, to 1, uh, came in and, and looked really good winning the Stephen Foster, got a 101 buyer figure. Uh, and what I'm thinking that that was a – a reconnaissance mission, if you will, to see how he liked Churchill. They come in, they find out he really likes it. They think they've got a, okay, we've got a short horse that can win the classic. From that point on, nothing else mattered other than getting back to this weekend. So I don't pay any attention to the Del Mar race. And um, I think this is a, a horse that's going to be pointed to try and peak here on a track he's shown he likes, like the steady progression of longer works for Doug O'Neill. And this horse nearly won a grade one in his fourth lifetime start. So there's talent there. So I'm going to take Pavel for a, obviously a very shaky win pick. I like Thunder Snow. I love that one-mile work on the 19th. And he's got an excellent record at a mile and a quarter. I like Yoshida, uh, from all accounts, training really well. I like West Coast, if he can get back to that uh, form of last year, the 115, 116, 117 buyers, something in that range. That would win this, I think. And then the other one I'm going to throw in, Roaring Lion, just on the, the class he's got. If he likes the, the dirt, uh, you know, Giants Causeway came over a similar situation. It had a great year. They tried him on dirt, and he nearly won the Classic. And this horse is very classy, loves a mile and a quarter. So I'm going to have him on my picket. So I'm going to use those five, and I have no confidence that uh, I, I, if, I, if I go into the, the Classic live on my pick four ticket and I have those five, I'm not going to be particularly confident that I'm going to cash. So it's just a, a wide open race. Um, so pick four. I'm starting. I'm in up with a hundred dollar ticket. That's more than we normally play, but it is Breeders' Cup. I'm going five deep in the mile. All those euros I mentioned: one, four, seven, eleven, fourteen. I'm going to use Abel Tasman and Champagne Problems for a long shot in the distaff. I'm going four in the turf. So I was one and two in the distaff. Then I'm going 2, 5, 11, 12 in the turf. The three euros I like in Sadler's Joy. And then 1, 2, 7, 8, 10 in the classic. So 5 by 2 by 4 by 5 for me. What's your ticket look like? Well, you'll be alive to a nice payoff anyway. So you'll be able to pull through. Your That's true. Uh, these days are su- such difficult wagering activities that you're going to get paid if, you, if you're right. Okay, my pick four is uh, one, two, four, five, seven. Uh, one master is my top pick on the um, uh, on the Breeders' Cup mile. And I'm going to stand with Abel Tasman and Monomoy Girl with two eleven in the second leg. Then I'm going to stand with uh, Enable and and um, uh, Chan- and uh, Channel Marker, uh, Channel Maker in the uh, turf. And then I'm going to go seven deep in the um, classic with one three six seven ten eleven fourteen so that co- that comes out to be a seventy dollar ticket five by two by two by seven best of luck with your breeders cup wagers remember that uh, if you are in the central kentucky area there's uh, advanced wagering starting what at 8 a.m saturday at the red mile that's correct uh eight o'clock friday and saturday if you're listening to this on friday uh eight o'clock uh just park and walk in and we've got plenty of clerks and you'll be able to get in and get out really quick uh, if you want to stay at the Red Mile, we've got uh, clubhouse tickets available for Saturday. Uh, 55 bucks includes a really nice buffet and a private room that you can watch the TVs. Uh, we've got good TV coverage in the clubhouse. And you can wager all day. We've got plenty of clerks, and it's very easy in and out. Then you can go home and watch the K Georgia football game if you want. Yes, uh, and if you just need to go by, if you're going to watch football and you want to stock your Keeneland Select account, you can go by the Red Mile and, and do that as well if that's uh, in your – uh, in your needs, list of needs for this weekend. It's a great weekend for handicappers, so enjoy it. Good luck. We'll be back next week with another edition of the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.